Hey guys, this is the review of the Hyakushiki 2.0. Sorry it took a while as I have other commitments, but fear not, the video is here. And I hope this video will help you in your decision in buying this suit. So, I mean, first off, uh, this is an excellent kit, that's for sure. I mean, uh, it looks good, of course, uh, being the goal of uh, being the highlight of the suit. And there's several gimmicks, uh, but the construction of this suit is relatively simple. For some people, you're not, kind of not getting a money's worth. But for me, the goal of this suit is, you know, all the highlights of this uh, suit. So, I guess I can kind of forgive the price point of 6,800 yen. So, uh, I have an unboxing video of this suit, so go watch if you haven't. And in the unboxing video, I mentioned, I mentioned that the suit, uh, there are undergates for the uh, mobile suit itself. For the gold armor plating but there are some relatively poorly placed gates so uh, like this one over here so i mean you can try sanding and all, uh, whatnot i do not recommend you to sand the gold parts because when you sand a thing it will just take off more gold along a bit making it worse but i mean for this you know the skirts you can kind of block it but if you're gonna pose it you can see it already and another poorly placed gate would be you know the ones over here and the wing binders and some other areas and the uh, beam sabers over here but that's okay because I'm painting a gate beam sabers uh, silver so it's not so big of a problem for me and if you see the nut marks unsightly then you can just you know use a Gundam marker at the very least to paint over it and for the weapons uh, we have this beam rifle over here it's a pretty standard beam rifle kind of disappointed that they used a yellow instead of gold but that's okay because I'm painting this also into a silver color so I might do a painting of the inner frame and several parts of the mobile suit so uh, keep an eye out on that video but there's a removable uh, ammo pack at the back of the rifle now uh, the front of the gun there's actually a, a sticker over here which I have applied and the hand uses a very simple pack like device to secure it into the hands as you can see over here so it puts it inside See this pack here, it's kind of hidden. Once you just push the handle in front, this pack pops up and then you can use this as something which I'll show later on. <laughs> Onto the clay bazooka launcher. I got this similar looking pack to this. As you can see, they are very similar. And it's okay, I was using a similar you know, um, hand pack attachment over here. And the magazine, it's removable. Great uh, ammunition over here secures like that, nothing much to it. Then uh, these pegs over here, they do secure into the wing binders of the suit. So you just attach it inside this attachment point. Like this. Same goes for the rifle. Attach it like this. And then, then you have the Hyakushiki with its weapons on the back. Now on to the articulations of the suit. So the suit, it's uh, quite good at articulation and the joints are stiff which is a good thing. So uh, let me take out these weapons because they are inhibiting the movement of the arms and the wing binders. So the wing binders, they have a bit of degree of mobility. So move them like so. And there's, it's by a simple peg over here. Move them left and right. And you can just move them down here like this. And this part over here, it moves back and forth. And the backpack, uh, these thrusters over here, they do move up and down a little bit. And for the thrusters, there's actually this red circle that's supposed to be put inside, but uh, yeah, here it is. This one's over here. So let's put it in, but because I'm painting this suit and you know it's gonna be very hard for me to take out the red circle, so I left them out for now. Also, uh, Speaking about left over runners, I'll just talk about that for now, but I forget. So, no, I haven't cut the extra parts out yet. The extra parts are this Quattro Bugina and the pilot sitting suit. And I haven't cut out the Quattro Bugina uh, pilot figure yet, so it's still there. Now, this is another left over part. And I'm curious as to why they put this here but not into the balut system because this is supposed to be used in conjunction with the balut system over here. As you can see, some of the runners are with the balut system, but some uh, are in this runner which I showed you previously. So I guess they are trying to save costs in just you know, manufacturing one kind of a colored runner, which is perfectly understandable from Bandai's point of view. And um, 
for the goal. There's no level uh, runners. For, I mean, level parts for the goal. But I'd like to show you how durable is the goal, which is not really durable. So you see the goal here. See, um, if you use a bit of strength, you actually scratch it off. So you know, in my experience, I scratch it uh, off uh, more times than I really wanted to. So I mean, be careful when you're handling the goal parts. And you know, I just dropped the goal runners and it snapped so I just drop it like this and snap like this so I think these gold browners are really fragile so be careful back to the articulations of the suit the hands they go up like this which is quite decent and the shoulders they do move exposing the shoulders the naked shoulders and you have this uh, shoulder armor that's pretty moving the shoulders they just move that much very well only the wing binder will stop it from moving. The legs, they move like this, a 180. Pretty standard bandai and the feet. I mean, sorry, the ankles, they just rotate like this very nicely. Okay. So the feet, uh, you can kind of bend like this to give it a you know, slightly you know, awkward position, which is kind of similar to the Zeta one. So uh, in the instruction manual, they demonstrated this by doing this. Uh, I'm not sure what's the point of this, but it's just a nice gimmick to have. Armor skirt, uh, the rear skirt just move up and down like this, and the beam sabers they just they're just secured by a pack over here. It's beam sabers, they have yellow colored beam sabers, and the beam sabers are the standard beam sabers as B1, so it's just molded in yellow. I still love the yellow color over the pink one because I mean it's a little bit different. In the pilot cockpit, they just moves up like this. Uh, I don't think you can see it, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. And the um, the head can pop up like this, uh, and the antenna is a bit weak, so be sure not to snap them. Speaking of antenna, um, they do give you an extra antenna over here in case you break it or something, because I mean it's a duplicate runner from the other runner, so you get an extra antenna. So moving on, you know the head can move up like this, exposing the eyes and the visor over here and you can actually change the visor so uh, see this one over here you can just uh, take out this visor and then slap this one on and I haven't applied the decals and some of the stickers and these black stickers are actually uh, supposed to be applied onto the wing binders over here uh, which is this end, this end and somewhere else try transfers Applied them yet and some decal sheet if you're wondering what are these small little things over here they're actually these things over here yep. they give you extras in case you lose them which is a nice touch ribbon there and i haven't mentioned about the other visor so the other visor actually is just a transparent thing so when you just put a transparent one and it will just show the eye and we, yep this eye it's kind of flimsy this thing but the uh, the suit overall isn't that flimsy, it's very stiff uh, compared to the other MGs I've built, which is a good thing of course. Skirts move up that much and the leg can do a nice little split over here. So that's it for the suit itself. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the instruction manual uh, right now. So the only uh, hard process in this building is basically just take note of the wing binders I mean the wing binders there's a left and right wing binder you just have to take note of it and just make sure you know that you're building the correct side because I got a bit confused but I overcame it so it's okay um, other than that you know this suit it's very simple uh, in construction and despite you know um, I've never actually built a Zeta suit before uh, sad to say but I can feel that the construction of uh, this suit it kind of feels kind of old I guess because maybe because of the too many MGs and they just feel similar somehow but it's the construction of this suit is nothing too impressive but you know the overall looks of this suit it's impressive I think everyone can kind of uh, agree with me with that so I mean if you have the cash you know just get this suit it's, it's awesome uh, oh yeah and I went for the 35th anniversary um, Gunpla event in Singapore so uh, I bought some goodies so uh, I'm making a whole video of that so if you are interested you can go check that out 
but I'll first do uh, the editing and processing of this video first and then the whole video will be up shortly after. I guess that's it for the review of the Hyakushiki 2.0 so if you like this video please like it if you have any questions or comments you can leave it down in the comment section below and then you can you know subscribe to my content uh, thanks and bye bye